one key word that's in the industry now that is gaining a lot of focus is decarbonization, be it in the passenger vehicle side or in the commercial vehicle side. And because of this uh, goal of decarbonization, uh, manufacturers are coming up with new strategies, new partner st strategies, uh, and also because the overall energy mix is also changing and which will en enable the industry to be increasingly cleaner and greener. So to tell us about what the road ahead looks like, we have with us Mr. C.V. Raman, Chief Technology Officer at Maruti Suzuki India. Raman San, welcome to ET Auto. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sumantra San, uh, for having me. And uh, to start off with, uh, in the pav pavilion here, Flex Fuel makes a debut. And, uh, and you have, you have, we have al already earlier showcased hybrids. So now, uh, let's say ethanol, you know, flex fuel, uh, stroke uh, hydrogen. These are, can they move beyond the uh, exhibition area into the market? Are, are they closer now? Well, uh, we are uh, working on a gamut of technologies uh, for uh, our objective of meeting uh, the sustainability goals of India. Uh, and uh, there is a energy mix uh, which is uh, you know which is now being looked at by the government. And so, uh, the first of course is how can we reduce our oil import bill? And so, therefore, can we increase the efficiency of our existing powertrains? So existing powertrains, all of them have been upgraded uh, to improve the fuel efficiency. Second is, the government is, uh, talking, uh, has been talking about gas-based mobility and increasing the CNG uh, stations across India. And it's going to be about 10,000 in the next uh, five years. So we, we are also participating in that. And that's our objective for energy security for India. And that's also creating... a a uh, low cost of ownership or low, low cost of running for the customer today and customer is increasingly adopting that. So we have 14 brands today which are having CNG uh, technology uh, and that's being increasingly accepted as I said and that's reducing the CO2 by almost 20%, uh, 20 25% depending on the product. Uh, then we talked about ethanol and ethanol again that's another mission which is there from the government side that how we can use the surplus grain or the surplus molasses to convert it in ethanol and can we replicate the brazil model is is the effort and so there's but a lot can it be because the economy the the various other factors there may not many, be like to like yeah there are many factors of course but having said that there is a, a, a clear direction which is there from coming uh, in the government coming from the government that we need to have this and so, it, it, towards that, first step is all E10 vehicles going to be compliant to E20 by 2025 when pan-India E20 fuel is going to be available. So, currently all our products are E10. They're all, we are going to make them material compatible by April 2023. So, every vehicle post-April 23, which is produced, will be E20 compliant. So, you don't have a problem about E10 or E10, E20 filling as far as that is concerned. The second step is, of course, when that increases, the, the volume of ethanol availability increases, we are going to move towards flex fuel. And the government has been saying that you should be producing flex fuel vehicles. And so we have made a flex fuel vehicle prototype, which we are showcasing here. And it's a prototype, which is a running prototype. Actually, it is running on E85 fuel. So uh, And so that's something which we believe is going to go towards production by, by 2025. You will see a vehicle sometime in 2025, uh, a, a flex fuel vehicle. All that we are only looking for is uh, uh, availability of the flex fuel across uh, uh, India and also what are the kind of carbon credit one can get uh, by uh, using uh, this uh, you know, flex fuel. And that's the ask and that's the discussion which you are having with the government. Uh, you also touched upon uh, hydrogen. And hydrogen, you know, recently, you know, a week back, the green hydrogen mission of India was uh, showcased. And uh, there is a push towards hydrogen and many manufacturers going towards green hydrogen. Green hydrogen also being used in, in, in along with uh, the PNG, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, natural gas, which is going to the houses uh, in townships. And that's a start which is there. We expect that that will go to CNG. If you do that, obviously... That's also one direction which is there. You can mix hydrogen. You can dope hydrogen into CNG and, and HCNG. 
and what is the percentage. So that's the next step which we are going to take. And their possibility is, of course, uh, hydrogen engine itself, uh, which you, today has been showcased by some uh, commercial vehicle manufacturers. That's a possibility which is also there. But we need to see, and as a small car, we, uh, you know, a small engine manufacturer, we have to also see how that would impact and what are the aggregates which need to be changed. Even the flex fuel, we have to change a whole lot of parts in order so to practically make it. redeveloping, redesigning the whole re engine. Re uh, redeveloping an engine. You know, yeah. the flex fuel engine is a, almost a, like a new engine. You know, right. all many of the parts are changing. So that's the effort. And the one last thing which is there uh, is going to be the uh, the bio CNG. The bio CNG is waste to uh, uh, fuel. So that's again carbon negative. And so whatever you have got, if you are able to, you know, uh, get that extracted. And it uh, and use it as fuel and reduce the CO2. That's also one effort which is there, which we believe is going to be uh, a direction. And uh, government already has a, a mission for uh, biogas. Uh, you know, 5,000 LOI has already been issued uh, to various manufacturers under the Satar scheme. So that's something also which we believe is uh, there. So many many technologies because of the kind of products which you have got, where the value proposition can be you know built. That's one aspect. And the of course, apart from all of this, of course, we are doing hybridization. Yeah. Mild hybrid already we have got. We have the strong hybrid now on the Grand Vitara. And we launched the EVX, uh, which is our commitment towards electrification of uh, uh, and bringing electric vehicles into India with an uh, investment of about 10,000 crores. So wide gamut of technologies uh, for each uh, type of product and segments which, we, which are representing and create value for the customer and but do it in a sustainable way uh, and affordable, uh, and, and affordable. Right. so uh, uh, talking about uh, your energy mix in your portfolio i mean maruti suzuki has been a strong proponent of cng for long and more so now and now we're talking about hng by the way hng the blend is up to 18 percent hydrogen uh, at the moment it is allowed up to three percent if i remember correctly two or three percent but then now the ask is to increase that to 15 percent or 18 percent okay but uh, uh, like some of the commercial manufacturers, commercial big manufacturers showcased uh, hydrogen and this time there's a new dimension of uh, hydrogen ice engine. So does that, do you see a space for that in your portfolio also in your overall energy mix uh, in terms As of fuel? I, I talked about it and I said that that's one direction which, you know, the manufacturers have showcased. We'll have to look at it uh, uh, as a possibility. World over, that's also being looked at. But we'll also have to look at it from our engine, uh, you know, technology development perspective. We'll definitely study that. Uh, 2025 will be a very important year, uh, as you said, I mean, for, for the industry in terms of the move to E20. And, but for Maruti Suzuki specifically, uh, you will not venture into the EV space. A late comer maybe, but uh, from what you showcased yesterday, uh, I'm sure it will be, uh, uh, no, uh, you will really you know, make a strong pitch to the uh, pr pr potential buyers and as well as you will start uh, the uh, flex fuel. So, uh, say in, in, a, in a, by the turn of this, uh, this decade, by 2030 or so, what's the kind of mix you expect in terms of, uh, I'm sure after petrol, gasoline, it will be CNG, the ma major share, but for these uh, emerging ones, for EVs and uh, let's say flex fuel ethanol. Uh, well, I, could you repeat the, that? The, the share of these fuels in your overall you know, ah, sales so, mix. So that's something which, you know, we'll have to see uh, because the uh, availability of the fuel, there is a, uh, uh, you know, it will be directly dependent on that. As the CNG stations mm -hmm. are increasing, we are seeing attraction towards CNG adoption in a big way. And so as ethanol, ethanol E85 fuel starts becoming available, definitely I'm sure manufacturers will start bringing in uh, flex fuel vehicles. And two wheelers are also doing that work, and so two wheelers consume a lot of the fuel. Sixty-five percent of the uh, gasoline is consumed by two wheelers, and so therefore there is a good opportunity which is available today to reduce uh, uh, the carbon footprint in a way. So I think these are things which we need to continuously, you know, uh, uh, look at and uh, uh, work on. I can't give any specific numbers at this point of time because once we start introducing these. Uh, we can we, we can start you know seeing some numbers and attraction. But what you have shared is at the policy level, uh, at the government levels in terms of direction and at the uh, at the OEM level in terms of actions. But at the end user level, uh, from that perspective, like for example, the value, the, the calorific value of ethanol is not significantly lower than. But then uh, the the value price proposition is a different. That's so so that's that is challenge. definitely a challenge, and that's again the thing that 
can we make uh, the E85 fuel relevant to the customer because <clears throat> of the reduced uh, uh, fuel efficiency on road which he is going to get? Can that be compensated through pricing so that he sees a merit in adoption? So that's something which we have to work on. And uh, before we end, uh, Raman San, you showcased the much awaited uh, Jimny. Uh, no, I mean, you, uh, the booking start now. The five door uh, no, Jimny makes it a global debut. Now, uh, what is your kind of a strategy now for the SUV space? Uh, you have uh, in quick succession, you are making some good introductions, but uh, going ahead, uh, no, what kind of uh, no, kind of share do you expect uh, no, in the uh, off out of the no, SUV portfolio? Well, we'll continue to be you know uh, pushing uh, for SUVs, uh, and because that's. We've already launched uh, two vehicles last year. Uh, till yeah, now, yeah. including the XL6, we have uh, three vehicles. Two we have launched today for the Fronks and the Jimny Fido. So uh, that will be making a, five, uh, a total of five. And we hope that we'll increase our market share in the SUV space from the current 15% to a much higher number so that we can achieve our objective of retaining the 50% market share. On that note, Raman San, all the very best. Thank you so much.